Greetings and welcome. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about the top five skills you need for a successful career in GIS. Now, having said that, any top ten or top five list, right, has sort of connotations of, well, this is my own personal opinion. Yes, in, in, in part it is, but also I would like to encourage you to think beyond what you maybe expect I'm going to say through my experience here at ESRI on the education team and also in various instructor roles that I've been privileged to have over the years, both online and face-to-face. -face. So these top five skills are debatable and I'd love to have a conversation with you about that very thing. Also, I want to encourage you to get in touch with me uh, through various channels. Joseph Kursky is my Twitter account and I write for the edcommunityesri.com blog and I also have lots of videos on my video channel, almost 2,000 of them at the current time. But let's have a discussion about these top five skills. You probably expect I'm going to say certain things, but also I want to challenge you because I'm going to say some things that maybe are a bit unexpected to you. So let's get started. Now let me begin by saying there are two way, ways that I believe you can think about GIS in your career. First of all, as a GIS professional, a GIS analyst, a technician, a GIS manager, a GIS programmer, or some other position that has GIS in the title or is closely associated with the main duties of that position. But also, I'd like you to think about GIS in terms of having a professional position as a business manager or a wildlife biologist or an epidemiologist. Uh, city planner and so on, that GIS is a part of your job. It's, it's one of the tools on your tool belt. So here, GIS is both a tool and a way of thinking. Now, I'd like you to think about, just for a moment, the relevance of geographic information systems and spatial thinking uh, in society. And let me, let me begin by encouraging you to think about the areas of concern in your community, your region, your country, your world. Well, we could have a debate about what the top areas of concern of the 21st century, but we would probably come up with things like uh, energy, uh, water quality, water quantity, natural hazards, uh, political instability, um, population migration and demographics, uh, economies, economics, um, what about climate, biodiversity, sustainable agriculture, sustainable tourism? All these sorts of things uh, have a geographic or a geospatial component. And thus, or hence, they can be better understood and solved, grappled with, with a geographic information system. Also, with spatial thinking that actually is part of the, the human operator that runs the geographic information system. Now, again, these, these issues are debatable. We could have a discussion about the top three or the top two or the top one most important issue. But I think that without going too far, I don't think it's a stretch to realize that these are all fundamentally geographic issues, aren't they? I love this quote from David Orr. Now more than ever, we need people who think broadly and who understand systems, connections, patterns, root causes how to think in whole systems, how to find connections, how to ask big questions. We'll talk about the importance of asking questions in a bit. And also, increasingly important in our everyday world, uh, how to separate the trivial from the important. Right In our big data saturated world, how to separate the trivial from the important is even more important now than it was 20 years ago when David Orr made these statements. Now I'd like you to think about GIS as a three-legged stool. You know, there's content knowledge in GIS. We'll talk about what that content knowledge is uh, more deeply in a bit. But, you know, you've got to learn things about uh, map projections and about uh, data quality and, and that sort of thing, right? How to represent the world in a geographic information systems environment. Also, you've got some skills, right? How to actually project the data, how to register unregistered uh, imagery, how to uh, do analysis, how to do spatial statistics and analysis with a geographic information system, how to filter, how to select, how to intersect, how to overlay layers, how to display layers uh, of, of data cartographically so that you're, you're communicating your results. So these are skills. But overarching, I think, and one of the really, uh, I don't know, could be a main leg of the stool, but one of these important legs 
is the geographic perspective. It's, it's a way of thinking about the world spatially, and we use GIS to help us do exactly that. Now, these five skills, again, are intentionally going to be different from other skills identified over the past 30 years for a reason. Again, I want to challenge you. I want you to think big picture here. And also, I would encourage you to investigate other skill listings on your own. There are numerous ones out there put out by various organizations and individuals and government agencies about the top five or the top ten or the just the assortment of good skills to have uh, for a, a career that uses geographic information systems. But let me come up with uh, uh, five for you and, and just lay these out before you to see what you think of these. Now the number one skill that I believe is really important uh, to the whole idea of using the geographic framework, spatial thinking, GIS, and education and society is curiosity. People that are successful in GIS, they're naturally curious about the world. They want to they want to understand it better, right? Geography, whether you're actually studying geography or you have studied geography, or maybe you didn't study geography, um, but you're still using the geographic perspective. But geography is one of the only disciplines really that makes that asks you to make sense of the whole world and everything in it right and so again you don't have to have come out of a geography background um, to think about the world in geographic terms but what I do think is important is that no matter what pathway led you into geographic information systems you are naturally curious about the way the world works and you want to you want to make sense of it the world is very complex and with a geographic information system right we break up the world in various ways through layers through filtering through scale um, through different tools that we use and we make sense of the world that way but in order to do any of that you have to be curious you want to we want to figure out what the relationship is between uh, uh, zoning and land use or between um, uh, life expectancy and birth rate and between climate and ecoregion health uh, all that sort of thing you want to you want to understand the world and so you're curious now you're going to consider scale because certain things have geographic patterns at one scale that may be not replicated in another scale also I think part of this curiosity is that it drives you forward in your inquiry and what I mean by that is that you're, you're tenacious. It, it makes you be tenacious. When you're trying to pick apart things because you're curious, you are learning new tools that maybe you didn't know before. You're using existing tools in new ways. Um, you're changing variables. Uh, you're changing your model about how the world works or how you make sense of the world. And so that drives you forward in learning technology, in asking better questions, in investigating new data sources, everything that you're doing interviewing people, finding out, you know, expanding your network and so on. So fundamental to all this is this whole idea of asking geographic questions. You know, uh, a good map leads you to ask better questions is a, is a phrase that uh, is, is heard occasionally in these circles. A good map encourages you or should encourage you to ask better questions. A good map doesn't necessarily solve all the problems that you're it you're grappling with or help you make sense of the world in a in a in a better richer way they can they can do that but they more more than anything else they encourage you to ask other questions hey I, I see this pattern on this map maybe I need to change the variable maybe I need to add another layer to it so I understand that a bit better so that's the idea of geographic inquiry let's explore that a bit more here you're asking a geographic related question. Again, it doesn't have to be about geography per se. It could be about zoning. It could be about city, uh, city planning. It could be about um, agriculture. You know, these are geographic issues and topics too, but it could be about uh, uh, business site locations uh, or marketing, target marketing. It, in other words, it's a geographic question, but it could be in biology. It could be geography. It could be ur urban planning. It could be in a whole wide variety of, of disciplines then you're you're going to say okay based on my question I've got to acquire some geographic resources what kind of resources should I uncover um, well it has to do with uh, what your question is and so you're going to gather resources networks data layers statistics <coughs> tabular data imagery vector data and so on then you're going to explore that through 
but not exclusively limited to a geographic information system, right? Don't limit yourself to just looking at a GIS, right? There are statistics packages, there are other analyses that you can do outside of a GIS. Now, a GIS is very important to the to understanding the world, don't get me wrong, but I think a lot of times people think, well, you know, if, if it's not in my GIS, um, you know, I can't grapple with it. Well, wait a minute, spatial inquiry and inquiry in general has been going on for, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years. It predates GIS. So don't just use GIS. Very important tool, though. And also, through your advoca advocacy as a GI scientist, you can advocate for more of those tools to be put into a GIS that maybe don't exist there right now. There are various avenues to help you do that. Also, after you're exploring, the, after you acquire the data and explore it, you're going to analyze it somehow. Uh, in, in many ways. You're going to display it differently, you're going to symbolize, you're going to classify, you're going to filter, you're going to use spatial stats, uh, you're going to do some overlay operations and so on to help you to analyze and make sense of the issue or issues or problems that you're grappling with. And finally, uh, you're going to act on the geographic knowledge that you've gained. Uh, it may lead to a better decision. Uh, in your government or your organization, your nonprofit, your private company, uh, you as an individual and your own everyday decisions. Okay, so I think oftentimes <clears throat> what's lost is you're not just gaining knowledge; you're you're going to act on it. You're going to do something. Your behavior is going to change, or be improved, or somehow it's going to be a bit different from what, from what it was perhaps before, or maybe confirming what you presupposed or your hypothesis was beforehand, but you're going to do something. You're going to act on that geographic knowledge. Now, I think important to this is this whole idea of, you know, this is a repeating cycle. Uh, so that acting on it and this whole inquiry process might lead, should lead, to additional questions. And then, then it's not just a closed circle. It sort of keeps rolling. It's, it's, it's circular, but it keeps rolling along like a wheel on a road, OK? hope that makes sense. So that's the geographic inquiry process. I think it's really important to this whole idea of being curious about the world. 